messed up, I think, so he shouldn't go too far. I'm going to just give him some time. I wasn't nervous or anything. I have made a good shot. He got on my decoy before I could get the camera ready to knock it off the stake. I was all over the top of it. I've got to secure that thing better to the stake. I, I learned my lesson before. I had one knock it off in a literally uh, spooked after it knocked it off and it turned upside down. So I've got to go back to my whole stake that I've got a, a hook on it where I hooked the decoy to the uh, stake so it can't get knocked off like that. I saw the turkey go out right over there and look like it was boogered up. I just don't want to get it airborne. I want to let it kind of get a little more sick and die before I go after it. Well, sometimes I thought it was a pretty solid head. It must have been low like a leg. You look out there and see my decoy uh, on the ground. My stake is sticking up and my arrow is sticking up. And there's my arrow. There's the decoy. And there's the decoy stake, which is an arrow too. But anyway. That was a good hunt. I worked that turkey in. It was a good hunt. I worked that turkey primarily with the uh, black feather slate call. You know. And I started pulling it on him too, you know, but make him think it was two turkeys down here. I started pulling it on him on black feather diaphragm, you know combination of the two work pretty good. Hope that turkey just goes off down there and hunkers down. He looked like he was getting ready to. Well, give the turkey I shot this morning a little time to uh, hopefully expire or either hunker down maybe hopefully where I can find him. I had uh, decent blood on my arrow, if you can see that uh, on that on that white fletching. You can't see it on the red ones, obviously. But uh, anyway, I'm hopefully I'm hoping it'll be a blood trail. Uh, with that much blood on my fletching, I can't help but believe it might be a little bit of a blood trail. Got a little bit of a walk in here. I, uh, I left and stayed stayed gone about an hour. I didn't want to hunt. You can only kill one bird a day. And as long as I was unsure about this turkey, I just went to a couple of places and listened. Went and looked in one of my fields. Saw a tom in full strut in one of my fields, so that was a good sign. Went to another field and uh, there was a time just feeding in it with two hens. So, uh, it, uh, it looks like it's gonna be a bright spring this year, pretty good year. But anyway, it's kind of a frustrating deal, not really putting a turkey down when you really need to. I just made a bad shot on it, it was a, a little bit of a confusing angle. I should have held off and uh, waited for it to turn broadside. I think I just sliced up the breast and sliced one leg a little bit because it was limping. Almost made me think it couldn't fly, but I don't, I don't know <clears throat> if, it's, uh, if it's got a pretty good limp like that. 
and the breast has got a lot of damage too and it can't fly. I should be able to run it down if it didn't just find a place to hide. Anyway, I'll be up here where I shot it in about another five minutes. Yeah, still breathing hard. <laughs> uh, I got right here where the turkey left out of the field and I saw blood immediately. There was good blood on the ground. There and there. It dripped over to there and was fixing to film that blood and the turkey jumped up from about 10 yards from me. There's good blood there. Good blood there where he was laying down somewhere right in here. But uh, I'm glad he didn't go far. I mean, it's good blood, but it's, it's still hard tracking and all this junk and this thicket. So I figured he wouldn't go far because it's so thick. Right when he jumped up, he couldn't fly, couldn't half run. He's got a broke leg. Too much breast damage to to uh, to fly, so it was a recovery I probably could have made immediately uh, after I got out of the blind. I mean, immediately after the shot, because he had too much damage to fly. But uh, anyway, I got him. That's a pretty good turkey. Kind of want to give a wrap up on this hunt. Took place earlier this morning. Came in here before daylight. A buddy of mine let me hunt this place. He deer hunts it. He lets me turkey hunt it. And uh, I came in here and got right on the edge of this field. And I didn't set up. I set my decoy up out in it in the field just in case the turkey was roosted where he could see down in the field and. I wouldn't be able to get the decoy out uh, after daylight, so I went ahead and did that in the dark. And uh, just kind of stood around the edge there. Heard the turkey gobble way off early. And uh, didn't want to take off after him. Just kind of held up on him and uh, stood there and stood here and finally one gobbled. And he wasn't far at all off the edge of this field back behind me. And I, I knew it was kind of too thick for him to come straight in. But I set up there anyway, and uh, I figured he would loop around. And sure enough, he looped around and came up this lane. As soon as he got, you know, probably 50 yards back, he could see the decoy, and uh, he charged right in. He actually came in on the decoy before I could get my camera turned around on him. I went to turn my camera, and the viewfinder hung up in the window, and I had to reach up there and pull the viewfinder back before I could spin it around. By then he done, done hit the decoy, knocked the decoy off the stake, and was standing over the decoy. And uh, I took a shot, and uh, it was a little bit of an awkward angle. And I thought, uh, I thought I had to pin where it was supposed to be, but undoubtedly it was a little low. It caught a leg going in and broke that leg and filleted the breast pretty good. So he couldn't fly and he couldn't half run. And, I probably could have got out and just charged on this turkey. Uh, I didn't. I give him some time. Uh, come back in here and uh, saw the blood where he left the field. Went down there just just a little bit off the field, and uh, he jumped up and took off down through there best he could on one leg and, and no wings. He wasn't very hard to catch down there in the briars. I did the old bulldog on him and latched the hoe to him and that was the end of that uh, but anyway it was a good hunt i am uh, really didn't get off to a good start this year i had to work a lot and uh turkeys weren't doing much anyway i just let daddy go after him my, my father go after him a few days let him have all the places and all the fields and uh and when i did finally get some days to hunt i killed one the first time a good day i've hunted and killed one the second good day that i've hunted uh it's uh it's actually I'm off to a pretty good start and uh like I said when I left this bird give him a little time to expire I went to 
went around, made a little loop around, saw a tom in one of my fields, and saw a tom in another one of my fields. So uh, might have a few more birds than I thought I did before season. Uh, hadn't killed anything really huge yet, but uh, I still got time. Might be going to Tennessee in another week or so. I got some good birds up there, but I'm fixing to get this one packed up in my backpack. Easy little walk out and uh, two for two. It won't be long. I'll be stroking with that old recurve. This might have been a good one for the recurve. He really was a sucker for that decoy. He could have been set a lot closer. And, uh, he didn't pay any attention to the blind, didn't pay attention to anything. I've already taken all that down. I'll show you where I set up just about 10 yards back behind the camera. Anyway, I'm gonna get out there and clean up a few of them feathers where maybe another old gobbler will come in here with his hands and uh, set up camp. I'll come back in about another week and see if another gobbler's moved in. A thing we're always, as turkey hunters, always trying to figure out better ways to do things. When it comes to toting out turkeys and carrying all the stuff that we have to carry, one thing I figured out is I borrowed a little trick from elk hunters. Uh, elk hunters, they, uh, they've got these things called game bags. They're uh, waterproof, blood won't go through them. And uh, you just simply take your turkey, stuff it down in one of these bags, and put it in your backpack. And, uh, a lot of people use vests. It'd be okay for a vest too, but uh, backpacks to me are by far superior in carrying gear. I don't know why turkey hunters are so far behind elk hunters on that and you know, western big game hunters. They have really mastered how to take out uh, heavy loads. Turkey's not too heavy, but it's just the trouble of getting them out, getting blood all over you. If you just throw them over your shoulder, get in your vehicle, got blood all over the back of your legs. This way, just simply go home and wash out your big game bag, let it dry, and you're ready for the, for the next turkey. By far, the most superior and easy way to tote out a turkey. Now, I don't have my decoy with me now. My decoy is normally in my bag. But it's no trouble, it don't weigh that much. It's no trouble to just hold the decoy in your hand on the way out. And uh, this is just a superior method for toting turkeys out, toting your gear, toting your extra calls, toting decoys. By far better than a vest. Turkey hunters really should uh, consider this. Get rid of them old clumsy vest, them hot vest. You know, these backpacks are made, they, they, they stay away from your back, you get air between you and the pack, a good quality pack anyway. It's not like a vest where on these hot days the vest will burn you up. Just need to put vests on sale, put them on eBay and get rid of them and start using a backpack. It's by far the superior way to, to hunt turkeys. Carry your gear, carry dead turkeys out, carry decoys, whatever.